Hi everyone. Welcome to another English lesson with Lena. Today I'm reading more short stories to help you get used to listening to English words, and hopefully you can read along. Lena xin mến chào quý vị và các bạn. Uh, hôm nay Lena sẽ đọc thêm những cái câu chuyện ngắn. Hy vọng uh, các bạn sẽ Đọc theo được và nghe rõ. Okay, are you ready? The first story is called When the Lion Bones Came to Life. Hundreds of years ago in India, there lived four boys who became childhood friends. As they all came from noble families, they were expected to study holy books and to grow up to be true leaders of the people and advisors to kings. Three of the boys studied hard all day long and gained as much knowledge as the most learned scholars of the land. But they understood very little about real life. The fourth boy didn't think that learning from books was the only way to learn. So, as soon as he was old enough, he went out to explore the world. He saw and heard many things on his journey, and by the time he returned home, had become wise enough to know which things were good to do and which were not. In short, he had developed a great deal of common sense. One day, the four friends were talking about their future when an exciting idea came up. Let's travel to see the king, they said to each other. We'll surely find favor with him and become rich. Since we're friends, we'll share all our wealth. But before they had gotten very far, the first scholar thought to himself, The king gives riches only to those who have learned much from books, not to people just because they have sense. We three should be the only ones to go and get a share, not him. Together, the three scholars argued over this idea for a while, but finally agreed that their friend, stupid as he seemed to them, could still come along. So all four kept on their way through the forest path. Not long after, the four travelers came upon the dried-up bones of a dead lion. With our great knowledge, the three scholars thought, we can bring this creature back to life. The first one said, I know how to put all the bones back in the right order. The second one said, I can make the flesh and blood and cover the beast with skin, too. The third one said, I can give it breath and make it live again. So the first scholar got the skeleton together and the second one the flesh and blood and skin. The third was just about to give the breath of life when the fourth, the only one who had sense, cried out, Don't you know that is a lion? If you bring the beast back to life, it will kill us all. You have not studied like we have, the three scholars said. We won't let you stop us. Since you won't listen to me and be sensible, the fourth one said, I'm going to climb this tree. Looking down from his safe spot, high up on a branch, he watched the three scholars bring the lion back to life. With its first breath, The great beast arose from the earth, saw the three scholars, and instantly killed them all. 
That is a traditional Hindu story. The next story is called Is It Fair? Once a man was out searching in a forest for a lost horse when at last he came to a gap in a mountain he had to cross. As he was climbing over, he saw a terribly large snake below him with its tail caught between some very big rocks. The snake hissed at him and said, Kind sir, please help me. I'm sorry to say, but I'm stuck here and cannot escape. If you lift these stones and set me loose, I'll see that you are justly rewarded. So the man took his staff and pried the boulders off the snake's tail. The snake was free. Now then, said the man, what is to be my reward? Death, the snake instantly answered. You will receive death as your reward. But that doesn't seem fair, said the man. Let's ask the first animal we meet if what you say is right. So the man and the snake went along the path until they came upon a bear. Then the man told the bear what had happened and what the snake had said. What do you think is fair as a reward, he asked. Death, said the bear simply. The snake nodded in agreement, but the man said, Let's go on a little farther and see what another animal has to say. Before too long, they met a wolf. After the man explained the story again, he asked the wolf, What do you believe is a fair reward for one such as me? Death, the wolf also answered. That's enough for me, the snake spitefully announced. It's only fair that you surrender to the fate that you deserve. No, protested the man. Let's give one more animal a chance to speak. Certainly, said the snake, but you must promise that the next one will be the last. In a little while, the man and the snake met a fox, and once more the story was told. But the fox, unlike the bear and the wolf, did not rush to give an answer. Instead, he said, Before I give my judgment, I must understand exactly what has happened. Please take me back to the very spot where the snake was caught in the rocks. When they got there, the fox asked the man to pry apart the big rocks again, and he told the snake to put its tail just where it had been. When the snake's tail was in place, the fox called out to the man, Let go of your staff! Oh no! screamed the snake. That's not fair. Look how I'm stuck in these rocks again. Well, said the fox, it seems perfectly fair to me. Now things are all even between the two of you, just like they were before. And that is a traditional Northern European story. Our third story is called The Monkey's Reach for the Moon. One night, the king of the monkeys looked down from a high cliff to the water far below. He saw the brilliant silver moon reflected in the water and thought, That is the most magnificent jewel I have ever seen. I must find a way 
to get this treasure for myself. He told all the other monkeys about the beautiful jewel he had seen below, hoping they would help him get it. But they all said, That's much too difficult. We can never reach down so far. Then the king of the monkeys had an idea. Look, he said, here's how it can be done. One of you will climb a tall tree and hold on tight. Stick out your tail and the next monkey will hold on to it. Each monkey will hold on to the tail of the one above making a long, long chain down to the water. Then the last monkey will be able to reach the jewel. So the monkeys, 500 of them, followed the king of the monkeys' plan, and one by one, they held on tight to the tail of the monkey above them. All of them were connected in the chain to the first monkey, who was holding tightly to the tree. Just as the last monkey was about to reach the object that the king of the monkeys so desired, the weight of the monkeys proved to be too much, and the monkey holding on to the tree let go. All 500 monkeys fell into the water, and all 500 monkeys drowned. Well, that's not a very happy ending. That was a traditional Buddhist story. I hope you enjoyed these short stories. Remember to like, subscribe, push the notification bell. We'll see you next time on English with Lena.